Welcome back. Time for us now to bring in our panel with us today. Former state party chair for the Indiana Democrats, Robin Winston. 2016 vice chair for the Indiana Trump campaign, Tony Samuel. Former Republican state lawmaker, Mike Murphy, and you, Indy political science professor, Dr. Laura Wilson. I can't imagine that we start without talking about the main thing here that's happened this week, which of course is the arraignment earlier. And I'll start with you, Tony, because most consider this federal indictment to be the most serious charge against Mr. Trump, as well as the most serious evidence. So as someone who's worked on Team Trump, at this point, what will this latest charge do for his 2024 political ambitions? Well, what we're already seeing is that it has not hurt his poll numbers. It's actually probably helped his poll numbers. He says it's helped his fundraising. I believe that because that happens every time one of these uh, charges or attacks uh, comes out. Um, his numbers, his supporters um, uh, coalesce around him because, and this is really important, the American people see through this. The American people are smarter than what uh, the media gives them credit for or what the folks that are that are behind all of this give them credit for. So all of these things, the Russia hoax, the impeachment first one, the second impeachment, you know, on and on, people see through that. Even Mike Pence in his announcement went through the whole list of all of these things, said he was right there in the White House with President Trump and they were all uh, hoaxes. And now he's starting to attack President Trump because he's running for president and a lot of others are as well. They're going to use this. But the voters are smarter than that. They know that this is just another of the long list of harassment against uh, President Trump. So Robin, let me bring you in because I see you watching as Tony's saying this here. And of course, we have heard some of that line, whether it's from Trump or many who are GOP leaders, that this seems to be some sort of political prosecution or doesn't have legs to it. So what do you say then to that, to those who believe this is led by Biden and something that the Democrats are pioneering? Well, first off, the president has not been over the top. Can you imagine if this was reversed and Donald Trump were president and this had happened to Joe Biden? He'd have been talking about lock him up and all those things. The president hasn't really engaged engaged. It's been Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, who engaged. It has been Republican after Republican who's engaged. These are not our people doing this, Tony. These are your own people in your party, many of the candidates that are running for president. Look what Chris Christie did the other night. Called him loser, 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 over and over again at a, at a town hall. So this will adjudicate itself probably not before the election, but the bottom line is is that, you know, we had boxes on, on stages and kitchens and bathrooms and showers. Really, classified documents shouldn't be out like that. So, Mike, you hear both of these takes here. What impact do you think it does have for the Republican voter who's watching this, specifically the one who is on the fence about whether Trump deserves to be back in 2024? Well, first let me say, your presence here today raises the level of discussion well, significantly. I wouldn't say that. Come so, on. So um, I think it's a it's great a blessing to our viewers that you're with us today. Thank you, um, Mike. But when it comes to the comments of Tony and 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 Robin, there's you expect them to have their views. I tend to be between them. And I would suggest that that Donald Trump didn't start off as the enemy of the people. He had a great swell of goodwill. In fact he claims he had the largest uh, inauguration crowd in world history, probably larger, larger than anything Putin has ever done. But he destroyed his own record, his own legacy through his own acts. Nobody forced him to break the law. Nobody forced him to pay off um, Stormy Daniels. Nobody forced him to get on the phone with the, uh, the Georgia election people and tell them to break the law. So he has only himself to blame, but he's the, he's the penultimate victim. He loves to be the victim, he loves to be offended, and the American people will see through that, as most Republicans already have, whether it's Bill Barr, whether it's Mike Pence, Todd Young, the guy in Indiana politics who I trust the most, has said it has to be anybody but Trump. Now, even Tony doesn't have a talking point for that. Sure I do. Tony, of course <laughs> I no do. talking point of to it at all. Of course I do, no, let me, let me uh, share this. Chris Christie, uh, Robin brought him up, and others back in 2016, since and now, they get media exposure by attacking Donald Trump. It's all part of the game. The national media builds these guys up. They do it by, they get their, their 15 minutes, or you know, usually a little bit longer, by attacking Donald Trump, and then they fade away. That's how, that's why Chris Christie's even getting any attention, because nobody takes him as a, as, as a serious contender. Donald Trump, stands for what most Americans value, and that's a strong defense, a strong economy, on and on, taking care of the American worker, uh, having a, a, a good foreign relations policy, 
which doesn't lead us into wars, which uh, you know uh, it keeps us out of uh, out of harm's way, uh, if possible, by 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 strengthening our military. That's those are the things that the American people stand for and look for in a president. He's proven that in his four years. That's why they're sticking with him now. So, Laura, I want to bring you in here because there's a lot that's being said. Tony's mentioning some of the values that he thinks candidate Trump and then former president aligns with Americans. And you just heard as well Mike talking about mm -hmm. somewhat victimhood in, in this entire, you know, ordeal. Does that work as a strategy for him on the campaign trail? I mean, by the next six months, we're looking at four separate trials that Mr. Trump will be dealing with. Is that a strategy to just say, they're persecuting me, vote me in? Generally, I think it's been very effective for him. Um, and we've seen him lead in polls, uh, you know, as of recently, lead very handedly. Um, now, the New York Times did report on Friday that 61% of Americans recognize these charges as serious, but whether or not they're serious enough that it would sway how someone votes, I think is a different matter. Um, and we remember when we had Donald Trump as a candidate in 2016, one of the ways he was really able to be successful early on in the New Hampshire, the Iowa, the South Carolina primaries was because there were several candidates and you had a group of candidates who are all anyone but Trump and then you had Donald Trump so you basically had two different groups of candidates you didn't have to win with a majority you just had to have a plurality so the irony of Chris Christie jumping in the race saying I'm anyone but Trump him and every other Republican candidate right they're splitting that difference in a way that I think uh, both of these things actually really advantage Donald Trump as a candidate for the presidency so that's the outlook there for the GOP. For Democrats, obviously, there's already the person that they'll be running, the incumbent, Joe Biden. What is it that Democratic strategists need to do now as you look at the top of the ticket and carrying Democrats into 2024? Well, he's in your old city of Philadelphia for his announcement. Um, that's going to be a kickoff in a battleground state. We have to remind people of the president's record. The fact that we're talking about all these $3 billion EV charging plant up near um, uh, South Bend mm -hmm. is a result of the president saying we want these things built in America. The chip plant built in Lafayette or West Lafayette, we want these chips built in America. The president has made build in America more of a priority than any president ever. We have to remind people of that. We have to remind people of the sensible, realistic leadership that this president has had. As far as, far as the cast of Ben-Hur running for president, which they've got again, it's Donald Trump, I believe, is going to be your nominee, Tony, but I don't believe he'll be your president. So if he is the nominee, what do Republicans do, those who've been on the fence, Mike? What is their option there if we do have someone who is still going through that legal process and there's a little bit of doubt there about his ability to lead? Well, first of all, they, they're going to have to weigh Donald Trump, the nominee, against whatever the Democrats are up. We, somehow we forgot to talk about Robert Kennedy Jr. So it's not guaranteed that Biden's going to In fact, at Biden's advanced age, and Donald Trump's advanced age, I wouldn't bet that either one of them, or certainly not both of them, may be alive to be on that ballot in 2024. Ooh. I mean, we're, this, we're running octogenarians for president. I mean, what does that say about us as a country and as a voting public? I mean, it's just nuts. But each, of, each in the voting public do have a strong alliance with each of these men. So we'll leave 2024 presidential there and we'll move into our gubernatorial race because Hoosiers do have people here at home as well running for some major offices. So this week, former Indiana Senator Joe Donnelly has reportedly decided against a run for governor or Senate in 2024, saying he wants to remain in his post as ambassador to the Vatican. Now that news first reported this week by Politico's Adam Rand and here in Indiana, Democrats haven't won a statewide race since Donnelly was elected to the Senate in 2012. And we recently spoke with Indiana Democratic Chair Mike Schumel, who also talked about some of the efforts they have to try and break that streak. What do Indiana Democrats have to do uh, to try and be competitive in some of these upcoming statewide races? Yeah, well, I think we have a nice stepping stone this year, Dan, into next year. This year, as we all know, is local races all across Indiana. So cities and towns, municipal races, people will be voting for mayor, city council. Um, those are a little less uh, hyper-partisan, hyper-charged, if you will, uh, races. And they really focus on local issues, bread and butter issues, uh, things that impact people in their daily lives. And so I am hopeful that we can start to make some gains, turn that corner this year with local races. Next year is, is a huge election year for Indiana. And what I say when I travel around the state is 
Next year will be 20 years of Republican administrations, 20 years of Republican governors uh, since Joe Kernan lost to Mitch Daniels in 2004. Um, and my challenge to Hoosiers, my my question to Hoosiers is, you know, do we feel really confident about the last 20 years? Um, and, and are we ready to duplicate that for another 20 years? I would argue that Indiana can be doing better. I think that we all have seen these rankings where Indiana's 45th, 46th, 47th. Um, I want us to tap into that Hoosier competitive spirit. We're a competitive state. We love sports. We love racing. We should be shooting for, you know, the top five, the top 10 in a lot of these rankings. So our kids, our workers, our families, our seniors, our vets, everyone has a chance to succeed in Indiana. So I've got a minute left here. So quickly, let me go to Laura. What does it take for Democrats to break that 20 year streak? Well, they certainly have to have candidates. They have to have a deep bench. They have to have messaging that resonates with voters and they have to have mobilization. And I do think Mike Schmuel is working on that. I think the party as a self as a whole is working on that. Uh, but it's really challenging. The Republicans have been incredibly dominant and they benefit in a number of those areas that you have to be to be successful. That's the big uphill battle that the Democrats are facing here. All right, and with that, we're going to wrap things up here with our panel. Thank you for joining us here this Sunday morning, giving us all of your insight on all things politics here in Indiana and across the state. Well, coming up, major announcements boosting jobs in Indiana and investing in electric vehicles. We'll hear from the leaders on those big announcements we talked about here on that panel, that $3 billion investment from GM. That coming